Hello, Metal Stud Framers and Drywallers. Pay close attention on this video because I'm going into the drawings again. We'll be talking about soffit details, ceiling types, soffit ceiling types, and how to get the elevations from the reflected ceiling plan, and how to understand the details. That is all right now. Okay. All right. So there's nothing in the keynote. So sometimes, guys, you gotta. The first place you want to start is in the is in the like the wall type page because they'll have ceiling types, right? They'll have soffit types, especially on big jobs. They'll be like soffit one, soffit one a, soffit two, right? Or it'll be just like S one, S two, or whatever S two a type thing or ceiling, right? C one. Uh, you know, there might be different types like C1A, different color of that one, variations, okay? But yeah, look for those types first. You're going to find ceiling or soffit types, all right? Uh, if there's none on this page, I just go straight to the reflected ceiling plan and see there. Okay, here we go. Now we're talking. All right, here's the ceiling plan. So this is going to work for, um, for like everything. So basically, let me zoom in here and I'll show you how to get your elevations. So a, a soffit and a ceiling is going to look the exact same. So there we go. So seven, uh, seven foot, 10 inches to underside a bulkhead. <clears throat> okay. So it's giving you a height there, seven foot, 10 to the bulkhead. Uh, the ceiling, eight foot, 10. Right. So this, this is giving you where all the bulkheads are supposed to be and stuff like that. Right. And your ceilings. Um, but yeah, you can see like, so this is how it's done, right? The, you're going to angle the perimeter, angle the whole perimeter and say it cuts off here, right? This is where bulkhead to the ceiling you're going to drop. And it's like building a wall from the ceiling down almost, right? But it, you can, you run your angle on your, uh, to, to, you know, you shoot your plane in, you, you angle it and then. Uh, you now then you got to move your laser to shoot your elevation. Okay, you can drop a few uh, Like a few sticks a hat track. Okay, but you don't have to go every 16 You just put like one in the middle one in the end. Okay, and you set your elevation You know then you run angle on the front and then you move when that's set Okay from end to end you move your angle or your uh, laser again to the to the plane. Okay, you shoot it, and that's when you stud out the bottom, going in this way, right? You pull a few to make sure you, it's it's perfectly uh, level, right? It's look, it's 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 uh, it's pretty pretty simple, but a lot, most soffits have like a, a full perimeter, right? You're 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 framing inside of something. You always thought you build the ceiling before the walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so sometimes uh, you do. If you're in a if you're in a big um, if you're in a big like uh, office place, a lot of times they'll t-bar the whole like the, you know all the mechanical will go in and then they'll then they'll put t-bar and then you'll build walls to t-bar and then you have to build what's called baffles after that, which is a sound and things usually for sound and privacy. Okay, but they'll put them around board board rooms or or really important people's offices. Will they will put baffles around right? Um, okay, so to start putting the angle, how, how I know where to measure the seven foot 10, if you don't have a laser, so you, you need to have a laser, okay, to do any ceiling work, um, to, you need to check as well. Okay. You're going to, you're going to mark seven foot 10 on the wall. And, uh, if it's just a bulkhead, the bulkhead goes there, right? But if it's a full ceiling, okay, that you're putting in. You're gonna you're gonna mark a couple seven foot tens and see where the laser is. Okay, you you want to make sure that you're go, you're going to the highest to the high point, right? Like you're not gonna go low. Okay, you want it to be, yeah. you know, you, you don't want to go below, right? You want to go to the high mark. So you just mark. You can just mark it anywhere, right? You understand? Like you just pull it up and check the the elevation from the ground up. Well, so once, once it's you from find... the the ground ground. So yeah, once you find your mark. Then you set your laser to that. Uh, so uh, don't be like sometimes like if you're if there's like say say there's flooring like big time thicker flooring going in after the fact right you know then then that might be something you want to take into consideration as well because when you go seven foot ten okay that's also to finish drywall right so you if you're putting in the steel first naturally you need to take that extra half inch or five eighths off. 
right? To raise it up that much more. Okay, so you put them, you put your mark at uh, seven foot, ten inch, ten, ten, uh, ten right. and five eighths, or whatever. Nine you, and three. Or nine and three. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, you just make you take the half inch off. Yeah, and then you can see your elevations on the side here for each floor. Okay, so you can you can tell like say you're on a site and you need to an elevation for something and then it's like all dirt, right? That's when you you refer back to the concrete footings, the grade beams. Then you can get your elevations from that. So there's that little detail here that you would have to, you know, it's like a little bulkhead. This is the I-beam right here. Perfect. Perfect. Exactly what we're talking about. So the this, this I-beam here and how the drywall finishes right underneath it here and up. They framed the inside of the I-beam on the outside, okay, across. And you, they drop the board down to hit the corner. And then you have framing on the inside of the beam. So you're just running your, your board a little bit loose there. Um, if anything, you're going to have some extra steel on the outside and you're going to run your board. Uh, the seam is going to come to the outside here and you can screw in upwards, right? Um, most cases I would leave a lip to screw in this bottom, you know, and then have the, the face board sitting on top. Okay. But you can build the ceiling just the way we did, or you can use steel stud and frame it like you would a wall sideways, you know? Um, but not too often you have to insulate uh, these ceilings or because the, they're drop ceilings usually you don't have to drop uh, insulate drop ceilings or soffits right so every, everything above that's insulated mm -hmm. let's just cover up <laughs> yeah yeah so here's a little bit of soffit here so here's a detail we'll go to on three seven point two let's just check that out <clears throat> that's a, that's a also, also th something you're going to run into a lot with uh, soffits and ceilings and stuff and bulkheads. The drawings are never going to be the almost never what you what you how you actually build it. They don't really have symbols for like the materials that we use. So they they uh, they end up using steel stud like they're showing steel stud, but in reality, or they show nothing like here, right? Like nothing like here. Um, and that's like the video I showed you guys, okay? Like this is this is why I showed you this video because this is how you do it, right? With these types of braces, and if like I said, like if you're if you're going into the Q deck or steel, you shoot these braces on, okay? Uh, some like man, I remember back in the day having to hammer drill these things, and oh man, having to put pin bolt in it and stuff, you know? Because um, it, it and just pure concrete ceiling, right? Then yeah, you got to drill it in. Um, but yeah, you can see here, I'm, I'm pulling it. See how strong, right? It's not moving at all. And there's just, there's just those two braces. We have just those two braces on this whole run and yeah, it's super strong, right? But th that's how you build it. Did you ever show them the Hershey bar wrapper? <laughs> I don't know if I did or not. Yeah. Those are 16 inch centers as well, right? 16 inch centers. All right, so no matter what material you're using to stud out your soffit or your ceiling with, whether it's furring bar or stud, make sure that it's on 16 inch center. I know joists and things are on two foot centers, but those are big heavy duty uh, pieces of wood, right? So when we do our res bar or anything like that afterwards, we always put that on 16 inch centers. And uh, we always put three screws in the drywall in the field on a ceiling, okay? And as usual, if you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them down below in the comments because I do literally get back to everybody, guys. And um, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss when we upload or go live five nights a week, uh, Sunday or sorry, Saturday to Wednesday, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We're live. So that's a, that's a good time. A good time. You guys can send me your drawings, your plans, your uh, photos from your jobs, and we can discuss problems that you might have in the field and in your real life jobs. So that's going to be a lot of fun, guys, and uh, get on board. Yeah. And if you found the video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Guys, this is Chris. I'll see you on the next video.